to see you, Rafa. Uh, uh, I would like at, the, at first mention that uh, Rafa is here with us to talk a little bit about R&D process and all the methods that are used doing, um, doing uh, that. And uh, Rafa is not only the founding father of this organization, <laughs> but also uh, my very good colleague. And I hope we won't drift away towards the uh, movie recommendation in the middle of the conversation. But yes. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> let's go uh, talking about uh, R&D. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's start at the very basic, what the R&D stands for. Mm -hmm. Research and development. Okay. Yeah, so there are two main phases of product development, let's say. One is the research phase and the other is development. Of course, there are projects that require um, focusing more on one or the other, but in most cases, uh, at least uh, in the mo uh, more exploratory projects, uh, researchers also necessary and uh, cannot be ignored. Even during a uh, pre-design phase, this is something that every designer should actually do to know more about the product he or she designs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, it seems that R&D departments are usually a part of big companies, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes those companies decide to uh, outsource it. Do mm -hmm. you know main reasons why it happens? So uh, there are various reasons for that. Uh, they may be um, overbooked with their own uh, projects. Uh, they might have simply uh, too many tasks, day-to-day -to -day tasks to handle and want to uh, outsource it because they cannot uh, rely on their internal team or um, there might be some, um, I don't know, uh, questions or maybe uh, some fears that the research might be biased because of uh, handling, handling it internally, that someone can push the project in yeah. one uh, direction or the other or simply maybe lack of knowledge, lack of um, competence in uh, finding uh, or reaching to the specific information. Or I imagine this might be, uh, uh, those might be uh, pretty good reasons to reach out to an external design studio. Yeah, that's cool. It's kind of fresh eye. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, also fresh, fresh blood in the system. Fresh blood, <laughs> fresh blood yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> definitely this might help. Good. Mm -hmm. So, um, what can be research or develop? These are some, because those projects are very different mm -hmm. from each other. We usually have from small wearable electronics up to the industrial machinery. Mm -hmm. So, is there any common field of those outcomes or it's always different? I think it's always project dependent because we've had customers who came for basically uh, knowledge research. They wanted us to uh, explore a potential um, technology or ideas. And a good example is uh, uh, one of our past clients who, who reached out to us and uh, with, uh, with their a prototype of um, um, catheter. And um, uh, they wanted to find out if there are any ways uh, or uh, um, if there are any ways to actually uh, execute a, a prototype, which would be, uh, which could be tested with uh, live patients, and uh, and uh, they also wanted to know whether this is something which could be manufactured in a larger scale. So our focus was uh, purely on the technical aspects of the, uh, of uh, of the, uh, let's say, uh, manufacturing uh, process. And we wanted to find out uh, and explore different ways uh, to simply uh, give our clients, uh, give our client uh, in the end a definite answer if this is something that they can actually do or whether changes would be necessary in their projects in order to, um, to adjust it to a certain technology uh, because the, there, there are no other ways to simply manufacture this. So, that's definitely, I would say, one uh, one thing that comes to my mm -hmm. mind in terms of what might be researched. Uh, <clears throat> the the other type of projects, or maybe, uh, yeah, type of project challenges that uh, that might require uh, detailed research uh, uh, might be related to some mechanical aspects or construction aspects, 
And uh, to give you an example, uh, we had a, uh, we had also a medical another medical device uh, which was a mobile uh, heart sensor and. Uh, uh, the specific challenge in that uh, which our client uh, came to us was uh, was actually um, the mounting system for this device because uh, this device was attached to a patient's chest okay. and uh, they did have a prototype which was already functional and um, during the uh, test with live patients they uh, the patients had uh, especially the elder patients suffered from chest pain when uh, attaching the device because the force uh, required to attach the device to, to the bracket that they used uh, was uh, significant. I think it was about a few kilograms uh, in order to, to, to attach, <laughs> especially if you're, uh, 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 well, uh, an elder, elderly person and uh, it might in, indeed cause some, some pain if someone pushes your chest inside. Yeah. So our challenge in this, in this, in this particular case, was uh, to actually come up with a uh, alternative solution to, to the ones that uh, to the one which was already developed, but developed by our client, and to see uh, if we can find something which uh, which could be uh, adjusted or used for this specific scenario. And our client also requested that, uh, the, well, attaching then uh, disattaching the device uh, should be possible with only one hand. So, okay. so that was definitely a project which required, uh, well, um, various prototypes and uh, it, let's say iterational uh, way of exploring certain mechanisms and yeah. finding whether this will work as, as expected from us. And so it had to be tested, right? Because to, to check is the level of comfort is good enough. Certainly. Yeah. And um, so uh, we had to do, we had to make some assumptions. We had to think about potential different, pot uh, potential different solutions. Uh, we also analyzed uh, solutions which already existed in the market. And uh, in the end, we came up with uh, two different uh, ways which would uh, be compatible with our clients requirements and uh, our client decided to focus that we should focus on developing uh, further and refining one of the solutions that we proposed and uh, I'm happy to say that we managed to find a good solution uh, although I'm sure that there were other ways that this this particular problem could be solved as well mm -hmm. okay cool so uh, it almost sounds like uh, it was uh, before the uh, design process. It was the R&D process, right? Yes. So we have to work around the, the mechanical uh, solutions and then uh, to proceed further with the design slash styling. Yes, because uh, um, this mechanism was um, basically defining uh, the, this, this product or how the product would look like. The particular uh, mount that it had would have to uh, be present also in the in the actual product, so it would be uh, very risky to to let's say start uh, the design uh, in this particular case from the product itself without actually knowing how it's going to be attached to the to the mount bracket. So in this particular case, before we started working on uh, on actual aesthetic side of this uh, this product we had to first find a way uh, and develop the, the the mount bracket and the, the method uh, the solution for attaching the device mm -hmm. cool so yeah and i think a, a, another uh, another uh, reason for oh, yeah, yeah. A, a, another reason for, for maybe for reaching out to, to uh, external design studio for uh, R&D process is uh, finding a way uh, or developing a mechanism or a way or, or something which would which could uh, which would allow to to bypass a certain patent or solution which already existed and cannot be uh, copied without uh, without licensing it. So this is something that uh, we can also help. And we also had uh, similar 
tasks and challenges in in our past uh, let's say projects and uh, uh, I remember a project uh, uh, from one of our clients uh, which focused on uh, developing a, a floor drainage system for drainage? yes yes yeah. for 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 a shower uh, cabin and uh, the challenge there was actually um, a precise regulation, a precise adjustment of the of the uh, of the. I think it was called um, uh, the, the styling cover. The, or yes, the yeah, styling the cover. The part that suits the bathroom. Yes, <laughs> uh, when you when you equip your bathroom with uh, uh, with the floor, um, of course, depending on what kind of. Uh, floor tiles you use they have different height and um, the drainage system has to be adjusted uh, often very precisely to to allow uh, the water to be uh, uh, well to, to go drain. into the drain yeah. yeah that's right and that's why we we wanted to to see whether this is possible and uh, the challenge there was that almost every other manufacturer in the market has some kind of specific way to addressing this this issue and uh, in all, in almost all cases, those were registered uh, patents uh, for those uh, for for those uh, solutions or those mechanisms, and we had to see and um, develop something uh, which would not infringe those patents and uh, make uh, and also uh, solve the the very specific problem that uh, that the client came up came to us with, and. Uh, well, this is a success story because uh, we managed to do that and uh, uh, our client managed to secure a patent for them. Yeah. So that was <laughs> a pretty good uh, okay. reason to come to, 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 to a studio which could do something like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can see that there are three main groups of, uh, of subjects or types of outcomes mm -hmm. that uh, we can expect after the R&D process. Mm -hmm. We've mentioned the uh, knowledge, mm -hmm. like uh, looking for the way to manufacture something yes. in the first so, case. Let's say a technical, technical study or feasibility study. Yeah. study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can uh, develop a new solution, so it's more mm -hmm. like exploring the mechanisms and uh, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we can also uh, check the patent clearance or yes. uh, how, mm -hmm. uh, how we can move around on the market of uh, many already existing products. That's right. Mm, and as you mentioned, these are the success stories mm -hmm. thanks to the uh, mm, constant evaluation of, of the goal and mm -hmm. having a really good uh, R&D brief as mm -hmm. a base. Mm -hmm. But I know that it's not always the story. Yes. We, we happened, I think, a couple of projects we had in the past that aren't that successful uh, on the field of R&D. Um, I remember one of them mm -hmm. and uh, I remember that the stiffing the R&D brief at the very beginning mm -hmm. was a big issue mm -hmm. because it closed almost every doors during the, uh, during the proceeding mm -hmm. with researching stuff. Mm -hmm. mm, the project I mentioned was the developing a new type of a packaging for the carbonated drinks. Mm -hmm. and, uh, on a the bottle. A bottle, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, can be, I think I can be vague. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, not that vague. Um, and uh, we were looking for a new, new way to manufacture that bottle and mm -hmm. make it look as our client wanted to. Mm -hmm. But uh, our client chose the material at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And it end up, uh, we end up with just one very sophisticated method of producing that with that mm -hmm. chosen material. Mm -hmm. uh, and pr probably um, lost some uh, cool ways we could explore and move that project towards. Yeah. So maybe do you remember also uh, this uh, type of the unsuccessful Yes, I, I have one uh, one other project in mind. I would say it's somewhat similar in terms of uh, why uh, it, uh, why the outcome might not be successful in in, uh, in regards to our client expectation. It was uh, uh, it was a project focusing on uh, finding a, an alternative to to wooden uh, wooden plank used uh, in construction site scaffoldings and our um, client request focused on um, um, whether we could we can use um, uh, plastic for that or, okay. or any type of uh, material which not be wood or metal so uh, 
it turned out that it is possible. Technically, the, there are uh, ways of manufacturing uh, such things and it should not pose any issues. But after a careful analysis, it turned out uh, very initially in the project that such, um, such solution would not be, uh, first of all, economically uh, valid because mm -hmm. it turned out that current market solutions are uh, really well thought out and, and you can it, find them first. that's right that's that's also eco-friendly yeah. <laughs> and uh, the other the other challenge was that um, there are actually uh, standard norms which uh, specify materials that can be used for uh, for such um, for such planks yeah. and uh, it turned out that uh, well, only actually steel and wood can be used uh, uh, for safety reasons. For right. safety reasons, that's right. And uh, for that, uh, for that reason, I would say this project uh, was unsuccessful because although a prototype was executed, although uh, every aspect in terms of um, forces necessary to 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 say that this this particular plan with, will withstand. Uh, a force uh, which is uh, actually necessary to make it secure but due to the requirements uh, in the market due to the standard norms which specify uh, which actually limit uh, the materials that can be used for that i would say this is this won't be possible to to execute and to to actually uh, sell such type of product because because uh, it would be um, high risk to anyone who would like to use uh, such product if anything bad happens, if there's a, any kind of accident, it might be simply, uh, well, it might have uh, very strong legal consequences uh, for, for using such material, which is not uh, according to, to some kind of norm, which was functioning. So in that regard, I would say this is an unsuccessful case of uh, R&D uh, process. Mm -hmm. Okay. so. Uh that might sound quite scary that R&D processes are not always the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, go according to the plan. Uh, but I believe that uh, some level of elasticity mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning uh, can help to, uh, to be quite successful. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe let's switch to that subject and uh, mm -hmm. how to plan a successful R&D. Because mm -hmm. we are uh, moving in a very unknown territory. We don't know what we don't know yet. We mm -hmm. are exploring. So how to prepare uh, such a process to, to uh, expect a good result. So it's always good to have some kind of assumptions and uh, we need to have a starting point for to, to, to even engage in, in such process. And I would say a good design brief uh, with uh, clear milestones or maybe uh, with clear goals uh, or at least pointing to a direction that we would like to to, to reach. Because uh, sometimes uh, if a brief is uh, so vague that that we actually don't know uh, what kind of uh, end result we want to achieve, it might be simply a never ending story with trying to find uh, maybe something better, maybe a different technology which is still in development to, to, to address a certain issue. But uh, I would say a, a, a well-written uh, brief or pro project product specification would definitely help. So clear goals, whether those are uh, manufacturing related goals or whether those are uh, functional goals that this product, this specific product has to uh, address this issue or has to solve this particular uh, issue or uh, function this uh, particular way. So okay. this, this definitely uh, would help us. And uh, also, uh, I would say a, a, an R&D project uh, is, is ruled uh, by a different set of rules. Uh, and uh, um, a client has to be aware that such projects might not end successfully. So that's one part is educating the clients along the way. And also, uh, I would say such approach uh, uh, should um, require or should maybe um, su such process, uh, R&D process, requires more flexibility in terms of uh, um, 
how the project is developed. So you have to be more agile, let's say, in developing next iteration. You have to react uh, depending on what was explored along the way and even uh, sometimes change or modify the goals because they have to be adjusted, adjusted according to to the found knowledge. Basically. That's right, to so explored knowledge because it's not always clear uh, whether the goal will be uh, reachable in a specific way. So, so uh, one has to have an open mind uh, in, in such project uh, that, uh, uh, let's say, initial assumptions uh, somehow would have to be changed or modified to, to reach a compromise in the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe that it is the, the biggest difference between the R&D process and design process, because in the while we design, we have brief almost set in stone, unchangeable during yes. the course of the project. And in R&D, it's more of a like uh, choosing the direction mm -hmm. and trying to uh, achieve some qualities that uh, they're planned, that have been planned uh, at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, so we've mentioned about what can be achieved. We mentioned some uh, failures, some mm -hmm. success uh, mm -hmm. preparations and stuff. But what can be done with the outcome of R&D process? Mm -hmm. What can be used for, for our clients? Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes the R&D process has to uh, occur before the actual design. So um, the, the knowledge uh, from the um, research phase might simply be a part of uh, actual product brief. Oh, Pre-designed. That's right. Okay. That's right. So uh, whether this is kind of solution which can be used uh, in the actual product, uh, then it might be a part of, I don't know, documentation or this project specification. So definitely an outcome uh, in, uh, in, uh, in a form of knowledge can be applied to, um, to a a part of project brief, I would say. A part of research uh, can also reveal um, a new idea or a new direction or maybe um, one of the elements of the research uh, or um, partially the, the results can be maybe patented because the solution which, uh, which we come up with might be original, might be something which uh, our client can use to secure a patent uh, for them. And that was also a case in uh, in few of our uh, projects that we completed because mm, uh, new original ways were, were, were developed uh, in the process and uh, no one uh, before has uh, come up with such, uh, such uh, solutions. So that definitely is a, a I would say a strong point for our clients in terms of uh, um, competing with uh, with other um, similar types of products. So I would say uh, that's a very tangible uh, result of a research phase. Mm -hmm. And I can also recall that uh, at the first case we've been talking about, during the first case we've talked about, we kind of helped uh, our client to push the bus business further because we helped them to find the way to uh, manufacture their uh, their product That's right. and to uh, f look for new founding for example and mm -hmm. uh, to uh, develop their business so further. yeah because uh, the idea was that uh, they were prepared that they might not be a technology existing Rich. technology yeah, that's right which would allow them to, for a rapid prototyping and testing uh, various iterations of their products so they had this in mind so as a result of, of this particular uh, research, uh, we gave them a, a solution for this, for this case and also uh, for uh, actually uh, manufacturing a larger scale of, of those devices. So uh, depending on the research result, I would say um, this project would either go further or, or might have been cancelled at all. That's a lot of stuff. Any advice while starting? How not to get overwhelmed when you've never done that before? <laughs> hmm. I think uh, uh, it's always good to keep in mind that uh, especially research and development uh, projects are time-consuming projects and uh, planning uh, or keeping the any specific time frame might be hard 
uh, if uh, if this is something to be explored, uh, if uh, for instance uh, there is no other um, way or similar solution existing in the market because mm. it actually uh, pushes us into a direction or into a mode which has to be uh, iterational, exploratory and uh, often identifying solutions which are not uh, correct ones for um, addressing certain issues. So, so if you're a client, uh, plan uh, always keep in mind, uh, take, uh, take the risk factor into account that yeah. a research phase might not be always successful or uh, that the research phase can influence the actual scope of, uh, of the, um, I don't know, a larger projects uh, which, uh, which you have in mind. So that's definitely something to, to remember, uh, especially uh, if, there's, if there are uh, budget constraints or time frame con constraints, um, in which there are often uh, present in every project. Basically with a um, client with open mind, Mm -hmm. Elasticity, yes, flexibility, <laughs> flexibility uh, can gain much from the research and development phase, and it, uh, as our conversation shows, it uh, can have place in a different uh, part of life of the developing product. Mm -hmm. It can be used as a pre-design phase, pre phase. It can be used to uh, improve some already existing stuff, or it can be used uh, at the implementing to the production phase. That's right. Yeah, treat it as investment and don't treat it as um, expenditure.